Hey, Jonathan. Hi, Phil. How's the sound? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Not coming through my. Hang on. All right. Should be better. Can you hear me okay, Jonathan? Yeah, that's good. Just Oh, you can. Whew. There we are. Good. Okay. So, uh nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Let me just pull this screen. Uh, let me just pop up a that one. So I'll just do an introduction to Solis and also, also to yourself. Yep, sure. Um, I, it's actually not meant to be a presentation. It's meant to just be a discussion. So the whole, yeah. point, the whole point is to get people talking. But so far, it really has not been much interaction, as it's only through the chat. There seems to be yeah. no capability for technical reasons to do it through the uh, voice. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, so listen, I mean, with us both being on and, and visible, um, if, if you want to sort of look look at the chat and ask questions and um, take it from there, um, I did I did put together a few um, few slides to kind of, um, I guess, introduce what event driven is, uh, introduce the kind of problems we solve, um, a little bit around where data and events work together. Um, Great. And then, you know, I, I think then we've got questions. So we can either, um, you know, talk through it like that in a very interactive style, if you want. Uh, that works for me. Okay. We had, um, was it Samit? Oh, anyway, the six, yep. the, uh, Samit yesterday. six steps to data driven and went into the architectures. So we yep. had, was just mentioned that that was discussed yesterday. Yeah. So this one would be, uh, well, we find out. Right? <laughs> How has the event been so far? Yeah, it's been, uh, I think we've had a few people at the booth. We've had some, you know, obviously technical challenges with working out how to uh, get the, uh, get all the bits and pieces working and uh, audio and video. And uh, I think that tends to be a bit of a challenge sometimes, but um, seems to have been, been positive. Cool. Yeah, well, the session with Solis yesterday had 50 people on on it yeah that's, that's good so i think there's definitely an interest in, in transitioning or migrating to to apis yep yep no i did look at i i think um so i i presented live last year in melbourne mm. um and Samit presented live in in singapore and it was really we could tell people were starting to think about you know i i think when you have a certain tool set you think about solving the problems a certain way um and there's been an evolution of thinking and you know some some demands on performance or um, you know uh, volume or scale that have driven people to look at other architectures um, and I certainly think you know event streaming is becoming mainstream if you like um, so certainly you know, a year on from those uh, we're seeing you know interest in technologies like ours has, has gone up um, you know interest in people to want to understand and learn um, around how to how to apply the technologies as, as, as increased um, so that's uh, that's been good. Good. Okay. Well, I, I think people will pop in and out. There's actually an event on at the same time. In fact, two two stages and a workshop. Yeah. So competing for people's time. I think it's sort of uh, <laughs> sort coming of. coming up to eleven fifteen. So I, we we get started now. Um, sure. All right. So I, I'll just go through the 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 formalities to talk about Solis. 
um, who's uh, in the large enterprise space and bringing them uh, real time and uh, improving their business operations uh, through event driven. So Solis technologies help many modernize their leg legacy systems, uh, deploy modern microservices, and even build event mesh to support hybrid and multi-cloud. So with the uh, Pub Sub Plus, the market's uh, first and only event mark, uh, management platform, uh, there's a comprehensive way to, to build up these APIs. Okay. Um, with uh, Phil, we have Phil, who's the VP of Sales Engineering, heading a sales engineering team in APJ. Uh, joining the company in 2016, he's based in Singapore with uh, 15 years of experience in enterprise software in the UK, US, across the world, it seems, most places, not Japan, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I've traveled, traveled around. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let you do any more introduction, and then uh, we look forward to sort of um, hearing around the topic today, which is um, yeah. really bridging the gaps between data-centric and um, event centric. And I think that really needs to be reinforced. Um, yep. So look forward to hearing what is event driven and yep. event first. So so over yeah, to you, yeah. yeah. Let's start there. So yeah, so so I mean, um, I, I guess, uh, yeah, just on, on the traveling around, I have, have worked in Japan. I was based there for a, a few months okay. um, and I do do get around the region, obviously not at the moment. And uh, since, since um, uh, the last uh, with COVID lockdown, actually was fortunate enough to be uh, stuck in stuck in Australia. So uh, not a bad place to be stuck for lockdown. And I've actually uh, now moved here, so I moved from Singapore to Australia. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, have have worked across the globe. Been working in uh, in I guess in the middleware integration space all of my career. So you know, a good twenty. 20 plus years um, and you know seeing the the evolution of um, event driven um, the acceptance of event driven uh, it's, it's a technology that's been around um, uh, all of that time so you know traditionally known as messaging um, you know specialist use case around um, you know high volume uh, information distribution building applications to work at work in a very sort of real-time manner um, I guess looking at um, you know beyond now there's a lot more interest in in real-time kind of um, solutions real-time applications so uh, it's becoming adopted in in many many places um, so yeah so I just wanted to um, just quickly start with um, a, a couple of slides just to introduce things. So, you know, what, what's an event? So, you know, it, essentially the world is event driven. The world is all about events. So you you place an order, um, you you browse a website, you click on something, you do something, you know, it, it's very event driven. Um, where, where things you know kind of kind of get uh, I guess blurred is um, you know that that event has some data with it um, that data gets put into a, a database somewhere um, so if someone wants to find out what happened something in the past that's not real time they'll go to that data store and they'll they'll inquire about it so you know our, our traditional approach to building systems was we would you know something would happen that would end up in a database and then we'd do things after the fact um, I, I guess um, so you know what um you know where where this has sort of evolved is um you know we've had these systems um in the past um we used to th call about things like you know esb integration apis um nowadays that's all being kind of merged together in what we call a hybrid integration platform um solace provides the eventing capability in that platform um working with other technologies in the api space like api gateways as well as integration platforms uh, for integration capabilities um but interestingly from you know from the vendor perspective they've, they've sort of been covering the amount of coverage in our areas has grown up gone up in dramatically in the past sort of three, four years. Um, and they're now, you know, the likes of Gartner are calling out that APIs, you know, predominantly um, REST-based data centric. So I call a REST API, there's some data I'm accessing or I'm passing some data to an application. Um, looking at um, the evolution of that, um, you know, predicting that more APIs are going to get to be event-driven. And, and event-driven is really, you know, event-based is something's happened. So you're telling um, someone that something's happened, but on the receiving side, um, you're not having to poll to see what's happened. You're basically told that something's happened. So you know, moving away from that integration access data pattern to moving towards um, a streaming eventing pattern. Um, yeah. So 
you know, why are people doing that? Uh, it's all around, you know, as people are doing digital transformation, um, they're looking at building new systems, they're working in a more agile manner, they're modernizing some of the legacy systems. Um, you know, one thing to call out, if you look at, you know, legacy applications, they're typically built data centric, there's a database in the middle. If you look at modern, um, you know, cloud first um, applications and solutions and, and information, a lot of these don't have databases or traditional databases at the core. They're built around streams of information being processed by microservices. So, you know, people, are, the architecture has changed a lot as well. Um, the other piece around, obviously, with event streaming is, you know, you, you're as you start decoupling and, and uh, decomposing your applications, you then start moving bits of it around. You move move much more towards a distributed architecture with bits of your processes running in the cloud, bits running on prem. Um, you might be uh, want to capitalize on some of those things that are happening in your business um, with a AI and machine learning in a cloud environment. So being able to tap into those events, tap into that stream of data and move it to a cloud environment is driving investment in event streaming. So, um, that, that, you know, just, just quickly on the, you know, that. That's great. Yeah, sorry, go on. Great, great Phil. I, I, this, this has to be an interactive session, if you don't mind. We ha I have one question ar yeah, ar no around what you were just saying about the decentralization and the new architecture. So uh, can you see the chat? Yep. OK. So this question comes. Uh, I... You can? Yeah, sorry. I'm just, uh, I've got present mode, so I can now see the chat. Yep. Yeah. So Praveen's asking, how would you characterize De DeFi, decentralized finance, blockchain APIs? Would that be a streaming microservice? Because it's pretty emerging now. Um, I think you can think of blockchain and the ledger as the as the oh. kind of system of record of um, you know when things are are um, uh, are settled um, or are being settled. Um, where, where you know if you think about you know uh, where an event fits around that or where you know um, the events fit around that if you know for things like um, burst handling. So if you get a huge burst on a blockchain system, typically the you know the writing of that blockchain can be can you know can react badly to to bursts of events. Um, so eventing. And, and some event-based microservices before that blockchain can act as a bit of a shock absorber. So, you know, m much like in a um, you know, front office, middle office, back office, your middle office is really the shock absorber between your front office where you've got real-time trading platforms, high volume, high velocity, real-time data, but your back office being settlement. So that whole middle, you know, that piece in the middle. Um, the, the, the microservices piece, so, you know, I, I think, you know, th there are two real approaches. You've got service-based microservices where, you know, your event, your services call each other and it's kind of a chaining together of API calls from service to service. Um, if you look at that in event-based microservices world, um, you, you kind of look at it and say, well, you know, an event, uh, a microservice listens for events and then it emits events itself. So it's it's in isolation. It's decoupled. It's not it's not invoked directly by uh, the the application that that before it. It doesn't invoke things directly. So you know it doesn't have that visibility of what it's calling. It's basically um, you know able to to work in independent. So if there's an outage of one of the services, that's okay because you know your 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 um your stream of events that need to be processed gets absorbed on the broker so the you know the broker sits between the different components um so so you can you, you can use you know a streaming microservice approach um to to do things around blockchain um obviously you know our, our area of that is not in the blockchain technology itself that's more in the application or doing something with the payload with the data uh, we're interested in just marshalling that information around and providing a backbone for um, for those um, services. Okay, thanks for the question. Thanks for answering it, Phil. I hope that addressed the question. Yeah. I mean, yes, you were you were going to go on. You were, we were talking about uh, yeah, new sorry. architectures. Yes. Yeah. So I've I've um, hopefully can get this. Yep. Can have both at the same time. So um, yeah. So so looking at you know. I, th I think one of the, the challenges and you know we talk a little bit around adoption and how you can move from a you know kind of a data centric to an event centric but um, you know when, when you look at something happening as you, know, you look at it is this access to data or is this a notification or an event so you know which one am I doing um, is this real time or I something's happened or am I looking at to see did something happen um, and also am I pushing something so or am I pulling you know, pulling some information. So in, in reality, it's often both. And I found, um, you know, there's an image I found that, that kind of 
maps it when you look at people who are designing services when you talk to architects when you talk to it you know you have people who go well no this is event i need eventing this is a data i need a database um the reality is you know when you're looking at something happening um it can be it contains data it can be an event that's happening uh, both are true um, I may need to put the information in a database. I might need to publish the event on an event backbone. But the, the you know the, all the business care about is the bit in the middle of the truth. So the actual um, you know that the, the something has happened. Um, and you know I, I think when we start looking at how we solve that, you know how do we how do we deal with this? Um, it really then becomes you know well you know with eventing it's really around that what is the real time value of this information so you know when you're talking about um you know sensors in um you know if you look at some of the, the use cases we solve in iot um you've got sensors with sensor readings and you've got maybe hundreds of thousands of sensors um if you're if you're making api calls to try and persist that into a database and then do things with it um, you can have these delays if there's got a lot of sensors all happening at the same time there can be um you know delays between something happening and you detecting that um, whereas in an eventing world you know it, it, your backbone is really there to to stream things so you can have um you know you can set your scale so if you're looking for a, a set of conditions to happen um, then you can, you know, you monitor for those. Uh, and when something happens, you can create an event. So your time between an event happening and you being able to process it are a lot, a lot more condensed rather than having to write to a database. So that, you know, the scale that, you know, Solus work at a number of different scale levels, but, um, you know, in payments, um, we'll do hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. If you put a database at the center of your payments platform, you'll do, you know, tens or twenties or hundreds of payments per second so the scale that you can operate at is often a lot higher when you're um, you know you're working with an event-based platform um, you know those payments obviously eventually get persisted into databases um, so you are you have that e eventual consistency so one of the patterns we talk about is eventual consistency you know when an event happens i don't put it in a database and make it consistent straight away. I, I deal with the event, I can do things in real time, but eventually it will be put into a database and made consistent for longer term views. Um, so yeah, so that was, um, you know, that, that's, you know, I think when people look at that, um, the reality is whether it goes into a database first, whether it gets published in an event first, depends on the value of that event. Um, you know, if it's, you know, if you're dealing with shipping, um, you know, it's already in a database, I've already got a system, I don't need to re re-architect my entire system to become real-time event driven. I can just feed the events hitting the database and publish them on event bus. And that becomes part of my enterprise. It's, it's real time enough. It's within a second or two of it happening. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, so I, I can suit both purposes. I don't need to go event first all the time. I don't need to go data first all the time. That's great. You've done sort of a, a good job explaining data driven versus event driven. And then you touched on the business. Now, yesterday, Solis talked about six steps. I think that was about trying to understand the use case and the people aspect. There's a question here. What, yep. what are the biggest hurdles you've seen businesses encounter when bridging the worlds between event-centric and data-centric? Yeah, no, that, that, that's a great question because I think it's, you know, you know, someone who's in technology, you kind of look at problems and you see, you know, you see how your technology would, would suit something as an enterprise architect, you can look at that. But, you know, the, 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 the reality in this, you know, in the API space, 90 plus uh, percent of all APIs are, are, um, are data centric uh, restful APIs um, in, um, you know, and, and I think even, um, even some of the ones around, you know, kind of flight information, um, people poll those a lot, so you know that the, the 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 norm in IT is is kind of using this data centric approach. Um, so so the biggest hurdle you know we see is is really adoption. Um, is really um, I, I guess you know it, it is a lower level concept, um, but it has impacts at a at a higher level at a business level. So it's really you know education of how do you you know get the mind share of the enterprise architects, the data architects, the business business solution designers, um, the developers. So, you know, when you look at your developers coming out of um, out of university, um, I actually, so I mean, when I did uh, my university degree a long, long time ago, uh, we, we did systems analysis and design. We talked about, you know, building applications, but it was always, all the coding was around a database 
with with processes that happen around that. Um, so so people aren't necessarily exposed to event type technologies till later on in their you know their, their IT careers. Um, I, I think that on the flip side of that, what's been you know good to help break down that hurdle is um, you know when you look at um, you know the adoption of eventing. Uh, products um, such as you know people building applications with technologies like Kafka, uh, people looking to you know how do LinkedIn do their uh, information at scale? Um, how do you know how do these bigger tech-first cloud you know cloud-native organizations build systems? They don't go right. Let's put a database and a data model around it, and then start building queries. They they start with streams of data. Um, so because of that, um, I think there's now much more information of the use cases, the patterns, the the you know the, the scale um, that can be accomplished with the architecture. So I think I think that's probably the biggest biggest single hurdle. And you know our, our six step process we talked about yesterday was really around how we can help you know big enterprises with existing tech debt with a huge amount of, of, of IT infrastructure already get started on that journey. Yeah so well behold our database triggers of yesteryear. <laughs> yeah yeah or, or even the, I mean yeah yeah, so, so I mean, database triggers for like, there. There is a I mean, a slide we use as part of our um, just pull that up. But um, as part of our adoption, when people are kind of looking at it and sort of saying, you know, how do I get started? Well, on the left hand side here, we we've got an existing application. We've got all these databases. Okay. We, we've got database Can triggers. You, are you sharing your screen? Uh, I should be. Okay. Sorry, are you not seeing that? Yeah. Uh, or maybe I've jumped out of screen view. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Uh, screen to share. Sorry. There we go. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so this, this diagram. Yeah. This diagram we use. Yeah. So on the left hand side of this is really that's your existing technology estate, right? And you have databases. The, the great thing about database triggers, if you you know if you don't have that you know, millisecond or microsecond um, latency requirement on an event, and it's already being written into a database by some operational system. Then those triggers or CDC tooling um, can be used to basically create streams of events. So if you think about, you know, you've got your existing transactional use of an event, it gets written in a database, a whole load of things happen off the back of that. In the eventing world, I may just want to expose these events and start doing my innovation on the back of it. So I don't necessarily need to recode my entire application as an event driven application. I can create a stream of events from my legacy. Um, I can push that through into um, onto my event backbone, and I can start doing things with it. Um, you know, if they're non-transactional, that's you know, it's great. It's it, it's basically being you know, it's both. You can do both data centric and event centric. Um, but as I start to decompose some of those systems, as I start doing some innovation in the cloud, I start doing event driven microservices. I can build that in the middle of this diagram. Um, but um, you know. You've also got the going the other way. So I've got my legacy system. I need to make sure that is the system of record. It's got a, a, an accurate view of, of the eventual state of something. Um, so I may want to push that information back. So you know it works both ways. Um, so that's you know that's that's kind of a um, uh, I guess a um, you know, encapsulates you know the, the legacy technology doesn't always go away. Um, it, uh, it it often has to coexist for a long time, and, and you start you know when you start bridging cloud environments, you start getting challenges around uh, you know well, what if my network's not available? What if I want to change my cloud provider later on? So being able to decouple all these things um, is, is important. Uh, that, that's that's nice because not everything has to be IoT or Edge or Kubernetes, right? Uh, yeah, yep. it, it's a place to start. Um, so, yep. so I guess the, the the thing that led to this was the question, the biggest hurdles. Uh, I mean, yep. on, on the same questions, would would there be anything else? For example, well, going going to edge data centers and IoT, for example, the endpoints, there could be like a huge number, huge amount of data, and I'm not sure how that translates into events. Um, yep. So, would there be any other hurdles? For example, yeah, that, no, that that that's a a good a, a good thing to discuss. So you know, when when you know, if you look at say you know you you've got a say something like open banking, uh, which has come along into a lot of organisations. So you've got your you know open banking. You need to expose all of your data to um, 
uh, to other parties so that they can, you know, so I personally can get a view across of my finances across all organizations. So, you know, if I let those APIs go directly onto my existing systems of records, then I expose myself to this very bursty traffic. I could get, you know, huge surges around tax time of people wanting to go and start looking at their data. So, you know, the traditional approach has always been, well, I, I, I size those systems for the peak. Um, and then the rest of the year, they're just kind of sitting there mostly idle. So, you know, you can have quite a, a high cost impact. Um, so w one of the things we've seen people do, and, you know, with open banking, you have the idea of having a cache. So you have a, an API, a cache of, of your, your um, you know, your customer profile, your accounts, your balances, your transaction history. Um, that's, um, that's what you let the um, open banking APIs hit. You let them, um, you know, hit that cache layer. It's 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 designed to work at a different scale. You can scale it up, scale it down using, uh, yeah, in-memory data cache rebalancing, all those sorts of things. Um, but essentially, then you have a synchronization problem. So I've now got to keep all these things in sync. So all of my syncs are events. So if someone does a transaction on the legacy, that will hit Solus. Um, it will then, you know, go across into the the um, the, the cloud into my um, sort of cache layer. Um, but likewise, if I've built some new transaction capabilities, so maybe my real time payments is built around a modern microservices that can work at a vastly different scale. But all those transactions need to eventually be be written to my system of record, my transaction ledger. So I, I deal with those in the modern sort of API driven world. I use event services. I can use, say, a Google Pay um, uh, API to do my payment. Um, however, I can then queue up or, or have a, a, a buffer of all those events that now need to get pushed through into the to the legacy. So, you know, even if I get get into the hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, I get that burst. That then gets sits on the event backbone, and that gets trickle fed into my legacy at the rate that that legacy system can can do it, so it can process it. So you know that decoupling of the modern and the legacy um, is, is a critical use case for for what we do around um, you know um, uh, event enabling organizations um, because you know the cost of rewriting the legacy. You know, I've seen legacy modernization of core banking can take you know five, five years and and hundreds of millions of dollars uh, the first, second, and third time they try and do it. So um, you know, I, I think um, you know that there's there is an acceptance that you know that the how do I exist in this blended you know kind of hybrid hybrid cloud hybrid you know I've got my modern pace highly highly performant. I've got my legacy which which I still need to keep around for certain usage. So how do I, you know, how do I keep the two completely in sync without losing data, without, uh, you know, without if I have some some network outages, if I have a failure, if I have a, an HA failover, DR failover, how do I make sure I still maintain a, you know, the 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 um, accuracy of my business data? So so yet again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> Very practical solutions yep. to solve. Yep. Hey, so we've got. Um, yep scheduled in just another couple of minutes uh, so yep. really encourage uh, anyone uh, watching this to, to if you've got any opinions on this maybe some experience to 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 to, to make use of uh, phil's um time here um so phil would, would you be around today how else can people contact you uh, yeah, sure. So um, I'll be back at the booth uh, later on today. So if anyone has questions, um, if there are, I, I do have a, um, so people are more technical. Um, we did, we did a, recently did a, um, you know, this whole kind of data driven, event driven, um, you know, RESTful API, open API centric world and the async API you know, asynchronous world where we, we exist. Uh, we actually did a collaboration series with one of our partners, Axway, uh, where we kind of looked at how the two systems can be integrated together, how they, you know, how they work together. And we've created a bit of, you know, technical content on the back of that to, to help people realize that, you know, it's, it, it is often not a decision of one or the other. It's how do I do both? For the right use case in the right uh, thing so so um if there's um uh, a way that i can post post the notes the deck um i can share that um, there's some example use cases around how the two from a design time and a runtime fit together mm -hmm. um but yeah back back at the um back at the booth for anyone who's interested yeah so yeah if you have got a link to that if you could always put it in the chat here or if there's a, any other sort of ways people could could uh, subscribe or you know if anything's caught their interest 
Uh, yeah. So, I, look, respecting the time on this, because I think there's some uh, subsequent events after this, so don't want to keep people back from that. Uh, thank you very much, Phil, uh, right. for explaining the yeah, difference probably. between event-driven and um, data-centric APIs. Uh, yeah. Great. There is actually so one of the links in the chat that people can get to is um, for a resource around oh, yes. API days for the microsite. Yes, yes. Um, so it's solace.com slash resources slash API days. Um, there you can get your swag. We can come and come and chat and um, get get a copy of the slides. Um, happy to, to share those with anyone who's. Uh, That's good to know. There's actual swag, but di digital swag, right? <laughs> No, no. I, th I think I think we're doing some sort of T-shirt thing. If um, you know, we we have a product called our event portal. Um, it's it's uh, new in the industry. No one's kind of doing this aggregate view across the whole organization of all of the events, whether they're on Solis or a Kafka. So we're um, if people want to have a demo of that and arrange a, a bit of a consult, we're giving away um, free T-shirts that we ship out to people. Uh, so. Uh, Happy to um, yeah to help people get started on that journey. Great, thanks very much, Phil. Hey, and thanks for everyone who's attended this session. I hope it was useful. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks for hosting. Bye. Cheers, bye.